deserve care in needy and deserving people of rural Odisha because your topic uh, based on the people who deserve I care how we are reaching to them I will just discuss I have nothing to present here actually I was not prepared to speak anything here only yesterday he has notified me to speak I, I said it's a fine for me to discuss and so that you can ask um, any question or query so that uh, it's a kind of interaction and learning from each other's experience. I've been working in remote and rural Orissa since last 30 years as a social worker. I'm not a medical professional, but I work in very remote and rural pockets of Odisha and that was my commitment to do something for my own people. I believe in equality, therefore I am there. I was associated with that organization in 1982 when the seed money was 19 rupees. And we thought how to start some kind of work so that very poor people can get a square meal, get basic education and basic health. With this objective, we started our work and from one village, we expanded our activities to one block, one district and at the moment, we are working all over Orissa with four crores population. The organization, rightly, Dr. Deepesh said, is associated with the United Nations. Yes, I am very happy that I have started my social work from a small village and able to connect with the United Nations. But that's not the real story, how we are working with the poor people. Basically, we are working in three issues. One is health care, one is education, and one is livelihood promotion. And today, <coughs> I will speak about health care. In health care, we have been doing many, many activities, including promotion of the basic health or primary health in collaboration with the government of Odisha and the government of India. National Rural Health Mission, now no more NRHM, they say National Health Mission, till government is working with urban and rural both areas. Also, to promote education, in remote and backward pockets of Orissa. There are still villages and areas where the literacy rate is around 10% of the total population. So we focused on girl child education, mostly the KBK districts, the Kalahandi, Koraput, those are the backward areas where you will find in newspaper, mostly the Maoist, Noxlite people are you know, killing others, create disturbance, break the development. And I myself is associated with the IKEA since 1995 as an occasional uh, volunteer to organize camps in different villages. <coughs> Dr. Dinagarajan was the site server international which was a Mumbai-based organization who inspired me to set up uh, some kind of uh, rural eye care program so that they all will be helpful. The other person was Dr. Bhushan Punani from Ahmedabad. He was also one of them who also encouraged me to enter to eye care activity. And then we started a little bit uh, kind of uh, organizing I camps in the remote and rural areas and conducted about four to five hundred eye surgeries in a year. 96, 97, I was associated with a 
severe community based rehabilitation program for the blind and later on we expanded our activities to community based rehabilitation for multi disabled programs then we realize if you will do some kind of eye care uh, activities on an occasional manner that will not be solve the problem of the people and through the cbr program we realize there are people who deserve our cooperation to restore the vision and also rehabilitate those are non curable blind people in the society in the community on their own community so then we thought about to set up a small eye hospital <coughs> we thought to set up it in bhubaneswar the state capital then we realized most of the people who live in very remote and forest pockets are not accessible to city and they never come never get the services so we should set up some kind of infrastructure in their own locality so that they will be accessible and they can get the services and the services must be also affordable to them therefore we set up our small eye care unit in dekana which is the 60000 population and very close to the most forest and backward pockets when we set up that we we thought how will do that we rented a building with 3000 square feet area that is in a residential area and with a single doctor we started we found it's impossible for us to hire the professionals like a ophthalmologist optometrist and the paramedics like a, you know nurse ophthalmic nurse so we started recruiting the unemployed low educated girls from the remote and rural village to train them of course one or two optometrists in the beginning we recruited one retired professor from acb medical college kotak who was willing to support us then we started recruiting and giving training we trained around uh, 30 girls and boys those who are simple between class 7 to plus 2 the uh, undergraduate <coughs> and they did wonderful work in 90 2002 to 2005 we did uh, good work we we set two clinics actually one clinic is for paying segment population and other is for free we found one of the marwadi businessman of the city came read that a slogan we put if you have capacity to pay please use the other side of services and he found that if i will go through this way this is free then he decided why should i pay if the free services are available and he found the same doctor same facilities because we provide the same quality services whether it is poor or rich we made that principle as on today even <coughs> so we found those cases and that day we decided we should not run the free clinic here but our commitment is for the poor who have no capacity to pay and get services how we will do that then we realize let us do two literally two hospitals one hospital should go to the people those people who are not able to come and get the services 365 days we have a mobile hospital we always go to 6 700 kilometers area of course now days we made the calendar and we, we know who will go where which day what kind of comprehensive camp will happen but in the beginning it was not that so we are going to the people to render services that one area and we thought those people who have capacity to reach our hospital who can able to pay the transport public transport have a lunch in the hotel they can also pay us 50 rupees 
that's not a big issue for them. So that way we run actually two hospitals. One hospital we run in a static hospital in the point and the other hospital with a doctor, with a paramedic, with all equipment should go to those areas and render the services. That way we run. <laughs> and we could able to reach to 5,000 surgery in a year as a free of cost. Of course, we never say it's a free surgery. We say no cost to the people, but of course somebody is supporting for the, the cost. And we also did uh, refraction services in the field. So later on we realized it's impossible also to touch entire Orissa. So we thought some partners from the corporate sectors and we collaborated with many corporates in Odisha and they have utilized our services and uh, rendering eye care to their own locality. That way we did some partnership with corporates. We did partnership with government other than the district blindness control society like Sarva Sikha Abhijan, the education department. There was a collector, he's a nice boy, he's from Karnataka, and uh, he was, uh, half of his day was spending with us to thinking how we'll give the best quality, high volume eye care to each and every schools and Anganwadi centers. So he developed a concept called mission, Our, it's a mission mode. All government officers or policy officer or forest officer, let us take a promise, contribute every Sunday for the community. So what we did, <coughs> we divided in many segments to the entire community of the district. We promised to touch each and everyone. From the small child, told the older people, the weaver community, the forest dwellers, the laborers, whoever. And that way, we screened many, many children who require surgical intervention, who require a pair of glass. Then Dr. Mihir Kotari from Mumbai was there, many others uh, from London, from, we, we took help, all of them, who rendered their support. And we conducted more than 500 children in one your time, more than 8,000 surgeries for particular district. <laughs> Two things we learned from those things. And then we thought, how will sustain this program? Because every time we cannot come. So we invited science teacher of each school to give them a training, to screen their own children on the primary level. And we brought the ICDS supervisor and the Anganwadi worker to train how to screen the children who are coming to the Anganwadi center. Now, one segment with the, those children who are coming until four years, five years to Anganwadi centers, we are getting the information. Those who are enrolled in a primary school teacher, school uh, schools, the teachers are giving information through the education department. But there are also people dropouts, neither they are going to school or Anganwadi centers. That was a bigger challenge for us to touch them because they are in mobile nature. Today they are here, tomorrow they are going somewhere else. <coughs> and for them, we cast the elected representative like Sarpanch and the elected Jila Parishad members who helped us, that we covered. That gave us a lot of new knowledge. Later on we realized how we can maximize those kind of model beyond this district. We made many presentations, that collector made presentation, program officer of the state uh, of MPCB made the presentation and uh, we did a wonderful work. And later on, the forest department, those people, there are villages, there is no road inside the reserve forest as you know. 17, 18 percent of the area is full of dense forest. We wanted to touch them because they are most vulnerable in our opinion. So we thought only because health department cannot do much because they have no cadre in those pockets. So therefore only forest department can be able to help us. 
So we invite all the Indian forest officers and give a presentation how we work together. It's in a mission mode. Although nobody is giving salary to Indian forest officers or uh, forest department to do that, it's a solely the responsibility of the forest department. But it's a you know kind of uh, encouragement. We said you are doing something extra for this you will get really a highly satisfaction if you are restoring your vision. That way, they identified 3,000 animators, they call animators, in very forest, remote areas. Those are only class 3, class 4 or class 5. At least you should read and write. And we trained them recently as, as uh, we have given the title as a community vision technician and just, just three days training we did, government collaborated with this, they went back, they screened the entire village and they said twice in a year they will screen each and every population of their own village. They know whether they are suffering with a, you know low vision or suffer, they require a pair of glass or need some surgical intervention. The basic ideas, because anatomy of eyes we have given, and the rest of kind of training for identification, for screening purposes we have given. And now we are getting a lot of information. So we are planning at the second stage to set up some of the vision centers in those areas so that they can get instant and immediate services. That way we are covering the entire Odisha. We have so far five vision centers in five locations with uh, two staffs. That's a mixed model of L.B. Prasad Eye Institute as well as Aurobind Eye Hospital because we follow both the models as and where necessary basis. And we have a very good relationship with them. We are associated with Vision 2020 as a, in a member, like uh, other members. Uh, we are collaborating with them. That way we have been working. Last year we did more than 12,000 surgeries free of cost. So I'm talking about surgery. I'm not going up uh, even, even 300,000 uh, people we screened through the community, you know, um, outreach programs. And uh, because two of our unit throughout the year 365 deaths, they are available in the community. That way we do. So gradually, now it's a coming to the point of sustainability. How will sustain? Because, you know, today probably MPCB is there. Maybe tomorrow MPCB will not be there. Because there was a time also World Bank support stops to government of India, they stopped the program. Now national NRHM is supporting we are working and we do not know what will happen in the next. So we should stand in our own foot. So interestingly, we develop with, from 3,000 square feet area to now we have a 40,000 square feet with the uh, sixth floor. It's the biggest building in Danganal with 19 departments. We have a pediatric department, we have a glaucoma different departments. There are 67 staffs are working day and night. We work 24-7. Any day, any time, anybody wants, somebody will be there to render support. Unless and other it is a very specialized support. And every day we conduct more than 100, uh, more than 150 surgeries. But our major focus is cataract because cataract backlog is very high in Odisha. And there are very few hospitals who are working on it at the moment. There are some difficulties. So with this, before I conclude uh, my discussion, I have some kind of suggestion since uh, the, you know, District Blindness Control Society, uh, the DPM member secretary is here. Of course, they must be um, finding some difficulties when they are collaborating with uh, NGOs or private hospitals. But we should, uh, you know, look uh, to our own operational systems. And most uh, importantly, as you know, online 
you know, entry systems, you have to do a lot of things and most of the NGOs are not well equipped, some of the DPM are not very versed with the computer systems, the even whatever amount they are giving, it, although everybody knows it's not sufficient, but at least some kind of support, it's not also regular. There are many reasons behind this, I'm not going to that part, but most importantly, it's a, it's a mission based. Unless we started from one village, I'm very happy we are working all over the state. We have a collaboration with the government, we have a collaboration with like-minded eye hospital and general hospitals. And that we emphasize on the PPP, public-private partnership. So far, eye care is concerned. And at least we, we all know that the major problem we face because, because of uh, uh, refractive error and the cataract. The other ornamental things, you, of course, I am not saying that we should not give more importance to those areas, but the most poor people who are losing their income. But there are, uh, I have a presentation, a very nice presentation, I am not, uh, already I have covered many things, but there are uh, things when we are talking about the livelihood, how we are restoring the livelihood of the poor people of the rural areas after in the restoring side. Now the question, how we are different from the big hospitals like uh, Natarajan is running or LB Prasad is running or Arvind Eye Hospital, yes, yeah, of course, we always claim we are different. Look, a doctor, highest satisfaction after the surgery when they see the client has got a best vision. They are must be happy because they have a limitation. They cannot do beyond that. But we are doing beyond that. We are not very happy once the person is getting back the vision, whatever the best vision they get. But we monitor what they do after that. How they managing if the child, whether going to the school, how they are going to school, how they collaborating with the teachers and the parents and the community. If an adult, whether he got back his occupation, how he is managing himself or herself, and if at the old age, whether they feel proud and dignity. So we run. So we have a team, social worker team, always follow and uh, get uh, case study. We do a lot of research. How they are contributing to our society economically, socially, and culturally. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll just quickly run through this. You know, you'll just see the kind of work which happens in the remote parts of. Or maybe you can explain if there's something happening. Uh, where is Denkanal here? In 2011, we are working there. Now we are working all over Odisha. So that's the area we are now. It's a very old Hospital, Anganwadi workers, yeah, school teachers. Doing the pediatric kind of things, as I have explained to you. School and This should be impressive. We have started and they did in 2011. So, which are the free surgeries number here? The top is free and this is paying Even I was fascinated to see. This is the only, what is that? This is the only pediatric friendly eye hospital.
laptop is other now that lady is wearing the boots do that that and alio he was not able to do anything now he is uh, opening his own television and doing work. 